Man's a kind of missing link, fondly thinking he can think. This episode of The English Nut is about the pithy poems of Pete Hine, like the one I just recited. They are called Grooks and they are full of wit and wisdom. I'm sure you're going to enjoy them, so keep watching. But first, do subscribe to The English Nut on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and X. Thank you. Greetings, fellow nuts of the English language. Today, the English nut has a special treat. We're exploring the whimsical yet profound universe of Grooks by Pete Hein, the 20th century Danish inventor, mathematician, and poet. A Grook is a pithy poem with an observation about life or the world. It has wit and wisdom, paradox and irony. It packs a punch with its simplicity and depth. Pete Hein wrote over 7,000 Grooks, originally under the Old Norse pseudonym Kumbel Kumbel. Kumbel means tombstone in Danish. Hein wrote Grooks in Danish and English. In Danish, the word is spelled G-R-U-K. One theory about the word is that it is short for Grim and Suk, which means laugh and sigh in Danish. But according to Hein, who coined the word, it simply came out of thin air. Let's explore some of Hein's best groups and uncover the wisdom within. Before moving ahead, I must acknowledge the viewer who suggested this topic. Thank you, Dinshaw J. Darbari. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Let's start with this group about problems. Problems worthy of attack prove their worth by hitting back. This group reminds us that the most challenging problems are often the most rewarding to solve, and also that the most significant problems are those that resist easy solutions. Piet Hein created groups during the Nazi occupation of Denmark as a form of intellectual resistance. His brief, clever verses are more than just poetry. They're a blend of humor, philosophy and satire. And they are timeless, offering insights that are as relevant today as they were decades ago. Let's look at another group. Losing one glove is certainly painful, but nothing compared to the pain of losing one, throwing away the other and finding the first one again. A witty comment on loss and the decisions we make, isn't it? It touches on themes of regret and the irony of life. It reminds me of the O. Henry story, The Gift of the Magi. Now let's look at this group that playfully critiques our own intellect. Man's a kind of missing link, fondly thinking he can think. What a striking commentary. It's a nudge and a wink at the hubris of mankind, believing in the supremacy of our own intellect. The term missing link refers to a hypothetical life form that existed as a stage between humans and apes. More intelligent than apes, but not as bright as what we humans consider ourselves to be. Pete Hein penned groups that sadly resonate with today's war-torn world. Here's one of them. Coexistence or no existence. In just four words, the poet captures the essence of our existential crossroads, the imperative of living together harmoniously on this planet, or not existing at all. Pete Hein mastered the art of conveying profound thoughts in simple terms. This next group is a testament to that skill. The road to wisdom? Well, it's plain and simple to express. Er, uh, and er, uh, and er uh again, but less and less and less. This one's about learning from mistakes, a process familiar to all of us, right? The journey to wisdom is through trial and error, but always aiming to err uh, less. The next one is about people who think they know everything. People who think they are always right. We all know people like that. Those who always know what's best are a universal pest. A playful jab at the know-it-alls, reminding us that wisdom often lies in acknowledging the vastness of what we don't know. Here's another group that hits the mark. He that lets the small things bind him leaves the great undone behind him. This group whispers a universal truth, that it's the grand canvas of life that deserves our focus, not the tiny specks that often distract us. Hein often played with irony in his groups, 
and this next one is a fine example of his clever turn of phrase. Wisdom is the booby prize given when you've been unwise. How often have we found true understanding only in the aftermath of folly? Heinz's word echo this ironic twist of life's learning curve. Even the know-it-alls experience this from time to time. Heinz Brooks also touch upon abstract things like love. Listen to this. Love is like a pineapple, sweet and undefinable. Isn't that just like love, a complex, sweet enigma that defies definition, much like the fruit itself? Now let's explore the paradox of courage. To be brave is to behave bravely when your heart is faint. So you can be really brave only when you really ain't. True bravery then isn't the absence of fear, but the action we take in spite of it. What a splendid paradox. Poems like this are both a mirror and a window to the human soul. Now let's turn to a group that speaks to the duality of taking life too seriously or not seriously enough. Taking fun as simply fun and earnestness in earnest shows how thoroughly thou none of the two discernest. This group wittily suggests that neither relentless seriousness nor constant frivolity lead to true understanding. It's in the blend where insight lies. There are serious lessons that one can derive from fun. On the other hand, one should lighten the serious stuff with a dose of humor. Heinz said that this group was the key to understanding all his groups. Heinz groups offer a lens to view life's multifaceted truths with a playful eye. May their wit and wisdom inspire you to look at the world a little differently. Do share your thoughts about groups in the comments section. Thank you for joining me on this journey through the profound and the playful. Until the next time, stay nutty, stay wise. I'm the English Nut. Bye for now.